Hey, babe, do you have a signal? No, I actually don't have a signal. Hey guys, so today I'm going to do a video on the installation of the DriveX RV cell phone booster from WeBoost. You know, one, one of the big issues when you, when you go out RVing is you still want to be able to have access and communication with the outside world. So whether that's through a cell phone, whether that's having Wi-Fi, whatever the case may be. And, and lots of times at the campgrounds, the, even if they have Wi-Fi, it's not a very good signal. You really can't do much with it. Or your cell phone reception just really isn't that good depending on where you're going. So we have had that issue and uh, we wanted to try to do something about it. So this is a product that we did a lot of research uh, on online. And uh, today we're just going to kind of go through uh, the installation on our Class C and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now let's open the box and see what's in there. So this looks good. So we have some directions, which my wife will make me use. Um, and you know, one thing I'll definitely say is everything looks very nicely labeled even to the point where, you know, steps one and two, step three, step four. So yeah, that's pretty good. And then they even give you an, an example, which is nice because we actually have a class C. So they actually show a class C in, in the example, which is, which is nice. Okay, so first we have the outside antenna, which I guess is part of steps one and two. And then step three, this is the inside antenna, which is uh, pretty small. But it's got a got a weighted base, which will be nice, so it shouldn't fall over too easily. So nice uh stretch of cable there. Uh step four. So this looks like the, the booster itself. So this is uh, where you would connect your inside and your outside antennas to this. And then this is also uh, a unit that you would have to have power for. So for the power, it looks like this is, uh, uh, what's this, 12 volt? Yeah, you, you, could, you could hardwire this in or it should have just a standard plug in here also. Uh, let's see. What is this a 25 foot of cable for the for the outside antenna so that goes with that and then this is the extension for the antenna cable ties for the installation that's nice cable mounts so I guess if you um, when you're running the cable along the roof you have something to actually mount it with and then this is the, the ladder mounting bracket with all of your screws and nuts and different things to to mount this to your ladder if you choose to do that. A hole saw bit. So I guess if you want to uh, drill a hole in your roof, which we're actually not going to do, but if you want to, then they actually give you the drill bit for that, which is nice. Or to the side of your rig, which we're not going to do either. You're right. We're not going to do that either. Uh, the antenna spring and side exit ad adapter. So that's definitely a a good thing with you know with an antenna like this you know if you if you're driving by somewhere and a, and a tree hits it it's attached to it to a spring so it'll have some give so that uh, it has a good chance of survival uh, cable entry cover so so this is for the installation if you want to cut a hole in the side of your rig and go in through the side then this is a cover to uh, cover that up nicely this is a bracket that this unit pops into for mounting on the inside ah, and, and here's the power supply that I was looking for if you just want to connect it to your regular shore power so yeah so yeah everything is very uh, very well organized very nicely labeled and the thing I like is actually even give you stuff for the installation like the cable ties and the and the mounts and uh, you know things like that so yeah
looks like a good package. We'll see. So while I was just sitting here at, at the kitchen table before I go out on, on the roof, I wanted to go ahead and do a little bit of the assembly. So I know that I definitely want to have this extension piece on the antenna. I'm going to attach this to the ladder and I definitely want to make sure that the antenna is up above the, uh, the AC unit, but of course making sure that it's not too tall uh, for uh, height restrictions. It's usually about 13.6 on the east coast and 14 foot on the west coast, the, the total maximum height. With our rig, uh, we're at about 11 and a half feet right now to the top of the AC unit, so I will you know, definitely, definitely make sure that I'm that I'm that I'm not uh, maybe like a foot taller than than that, so that we don't have any any issues with height. But you know, definitely want to extend that as far as possible. So. Okay, everything is nice and tight. So antenna with the extension spring on the bottom, here's the cord, and then this will attach to the ladder. Okay, so we're up on top of the roof now and doing the installation of the bracket to this ladder here on top. Um, there are a couple of different ways you can do it. You can attach it to this part or you can attach it to this, to this back part on the outside. Just because I don't want this cable flapping in the wind, I, I want to do the install here so that I can actually um, you know, fasten the, the cable to the roof so that it, you know, it won't get damaged. So this is just a, just a soft install. I haven't tightened anything down yet. And they also give you uh, some, um, some Loctite basically for your, for your threads. So when you do your hard install, everything is, 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 is where you want it, then you should definitely use that to make sure everything is uh, nice and tight. But just to kind of show you on the soft install, the bracketry that they give you is nice because it can definitely work for a number of different thicknesses and diameters of ladders and it'll you know it's it's pretty multifunctional for whatever that you're going to be running into So once you decide on your permanent location, then go ahead and tighten everything down real good. It's a tight fit, but it still has plenty of give with the uh, spring. So I feel confident that if we were to hit some tree branches or anything that we uh, would not have an issue. But also as a, as a final check, I am going to just verify um, with, a, with a tape measure the height from the top of the roof to here and then from the uh, top of the rig down down to the bottom just to make sure that we have not exceeded the height limit, you know, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so now we're gonna prep the roof to run the cable over to our entry point. point. Now what we've chosen to do, we've chosen to put the cable in through our slide. We do not wanna have to drill a hole in our roof. We do not wanna have any warranty issues with our roof and definitely no leaking issues. So. We've chosen to do it that way. Also, if we ever needed to move it or whatever uh, in the future, we don't have a permanent hole in the roof, a, a set location. We could actually move this and change the location or just gives us more flexibility and once again, does not mess up our warranty. Now, uh, these uh, cable, this is a whole bag of, of, of cable mounts that came in the kit with zip ties. And what you do is you just slide the, the zip tie through the slot and then you would put your cable here and then just zip zip tight down tight and um, cut off the excess and so what we're going to do is I'm going to use some Windex or some type of a cleaner to clean the surface 
these just uh, stick down to the roof and hopefully these will hold well and do the trick. Okay, so the cable management in this kit is excellent. I'm very happy with these uh, stick down little tabs here to uh, use with these zip ties in order to uh, you know, manage your cables, make sure everything's tight. The only thing I'll have to do is give them a final tightening up and then, and then just cut this extra part here, but everything has been laid out on the roof. And what I did was with the extra cable, I had uh, probably an extra eight to ten foot of, of uh, cable left and I and I ran it uh, underneath the awning topper underneath the rubber seal through the top of the slot so uh, we'll go on the inside of the rig and see where that came out and then we will go to the next step which will be to install the booster on the inside of the rig okay so now we've made it to the inside it's a little little warm out there so hopefully I didn't sweat my shirt out but uh you know, and also I wanted to say that uh, hopefully the video isn't too dark. We decided to do it uh, undercover in our in our storage area so that we could take advantage of the shade because once again it is a warm day. Um, so anyway, we are on the inside now, and the cable that we ran through the slide actually came through the side of our of our slide out here on the other side of this of this trim, which which would be nice for uh, hiding the, the uh, cord. And what we're actually going to do is. If you come over here, we've decided to mount the booster to the back side of our dinette, kind of out of the way because this is space that doesn't get used for anything else anyway, and there's also an outlet right there below. And the location for the inside antenna is going to be on our kitchen table right here because this is typically where we work when we uh, have our laptops and different things like that, and it's also just a few feet from our TV and everything else here on the inside of the rig so it's a nice central location but we're also going to leave enough cable so that we can move it closer to the TV move it around if we need to but as a kind of a base location we're going to use this uh, dinette so you have it here at the end of the table eventually what I'll do is I will probably drill a hole in the back of this so that this can can just go straight through to the uh, booster for the cable management and that's about it. This is the mounting cradle that came with the uh, booster unit. So I will screw this into the back of the dinette. We'll mount this and then we'll have the, this is for the outside antenna. This is for the inside antenna. And that is your, your uh, power input. So I'm just doing a soft install right now. We're going to get everything in its general location and then run some tests. And um, my lovely wife did remind me that I will be attaching this with command strips, not with uh, screws. So she is the brains of the operation and I listen to her. Okay, so I turned the generator on and plugged this into uh, the outlet down here and we have a green light uh, according to the directions if you have a green solid light you should be good to go once again we're connected into the outdoor antenna and the indoor antenna there's our power it's again soft install so I'll mount everything here after we test and here we have the in indoor antenna and let's start the test so the first test will be without the Wii Boost turn on. So this is just uh, the normal circumstances without the Wii Boost and let's see how it looks. Okay, so 
download 3.1 upload 8.79 okay without the Wii boost I was I had two bars and these were my results and now we have just turned the Wii boost on we have the green light so immediately I went up to it looks like three bars and let's run the test again okay so yeah that's definitely a lot better yeah so these were the two tests so 3.11 download went up to 8.06 and an 8.79 upload went up to 16.23 I went from two bars to three kind of bordering on four kind of flashing between three and four so yeah that is a significant improvement wow that's yeah that's that's a really good improvement hey guys so it's been about three months since our WeBoost installation I think it's worked pretty well what do you think yes um, it's definitely something that you want to have because when you need it you don't want to be without it yeah definitely I mean I feel like in areas where we've had maybe one or two bars, we've gotten an increase of at least two bars, right? Yeah, I mean, definitely there have been times when we really kind of didn't have a signal at all. And then we were able to get, you know, one or two bars. So I would say on average, we're able to get one to two more bars more than what we had without the Wii Boost. Yeah, definitely. And. I actually um, am working from the road now, so having the Wii Boost is really critical for me to actually just be able to do my job because I'm working remote, I'm meeting with different people every day, having video conferences. And so yeah. for video conferences, you really have to have a good strong signal so that you're not dropping the calls and that you're not freezing during those video calls. So. The Wii Boost has really helped in all of the situations, um, so I'm very excited that we have it. Um, honestly, we wouldn't really be able to travel and me work without having it. Definitely. I mean, at this point, I don't have any regrets. I, I think we definitely chose the right product, and it's worked well for us. Yeah, and so as you can see, we're both working here at the table. Uh, Robin is doing a lot of the processing of the YouTube videos and getting them uploaded. I'm working here, so we actually have our workspace. And so we keep the Wii Boost right here at the table. Um, so that way we have both of our cell phones that sit here on the table next to the Wii Boost so they can maximize that signal. And then we do hotspot to our computers, to our iPads, to the TV. And so you want to have a location where you're actually going to keep yeah. it and use it often. And again, since we spend most of our time sitting here at the table when we're working, this was definitely a great location. Um, having the cord come in from the slide has not been an issue, which is great. We did not have to drill any holes inside of our RV because yeah. I really didn't want to do that. <laughs> So I'm glad that we were able to just kind of snake it through the slide. When we uh, pull in the slide or out, we just make sure that the, co the cord is not obstructed, that you know it doesn't interfere with the slide at all. The other piece that we have, the receiver is just right behind our dinette. We just have it Velcro to the back of the dinette so that it's very close and we have the cord just kind of um, wrapped around and it's underneath this seat so if we need to move the Wii Boost to a different location which would typically be to the front of the cab closer to the TV um, we can do that pretty easily without you know having to do a whole lot so it's kind of a, like a semi-permanent install it's not a hard install we do have the ability to move it if we need to do that 
Yeah, I would def definitely recommend that too. That was that was a smart move. Yeah. At this point, we've had it for a few months. Again, it's it's really worked great. So I'm glad that we went ahead and you know spent the money for the investment so that I'm able to work on the road so that we can stay connected, have the ability to you know check our emails and um, upload videos. So once we get to a location, we basically just do the speed test and just kind of see, okay, what kind of speeds are we looking at? And we've also been logging at every location, um, the difference between what is our signal without the Weeboos and then what is the signal with the Weeboos. And we do that at every location, just to verify that it's actually working and that we're getting the benefit from it. And again, on average, it's been one to two bars. And I'd also like to mention that over the last few months, we've actually camped in seven different states and we've been moving around quite a bit. So it's not like, oh, we've just used it a couple of times. We've we've had to set up camp and, and move around, you know, seven or eight different campsites during this time. So we've, you know, we've, we've, we've really tested it out. And uh, yeah. Exactly. Up, yeah. We've actually used it at every location. It, is, it has worked and improved the signal everywhere that we have been. I would definitely give it a thumbs up. Definitely recommend this product. And um, we will put all of the uh, links and information for the products in the description. So thanks for joining us for this product review of the WeBoost RV antenna. Again, it's been great. I also give it a thumbs up. So I would definitely recommend, highly recommend getting the WeBoost RV antenna. Awesome. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Be sure to check out our selection of travel apparel at shopredsquare.com and our Etsy shop. Links will be in the description. Thank you.